Growing up, the youngest of four children, the path was already set uh, in that I was going to follow everybody else to church on Sunday mornings. And my parents were both faithful to that. They drug us every weekend to church, and I didn't really have to think about it. I just went along. Eventually, uh, my parents uh, asked me later on in high school, they said, you can, you can continue coming with us or not attend. And I surprised myself a bit in the fact that I continued to go. Through my time at St. John's, I continued this. While my friends would be waking up on Sunday morning, I would be at the Abbey uh, with the monks at Mass. I didn't really think about my faith uh, or really start trying to uh, understand it for myself until later on when I lived in Germany. For the first time in my life, I was in the minority as a Catholic. I actually started to explore my faith by myself. And about at that same time, a good friend, a monk, here from St. John's gave me a call and he said, do you have plans for next year? And I said, well, no. And he said, would you like to volunteer? I said, sure. He said, well, would you like to know where you would be volunteering? I said, yeah, that'd be good. And he said, Africa. I said, well, count me in. And so I spent a year with the Benedictine Volunteer Corps in a remote part of East Africa in Tanzania. I felt really happy. And it wasn't from the lack of electricity, the daily sustenance of rice and beans, the extreme heat, or even teaching. And I finally figured out that it was the monastic structure to the way of life. You know, a structured prayer life, a communal living, good relationships, meaningful work, were all things that gave me joy and felt like I was alive. Upon returning to the United States, that I would explore this and try to enter a monastic life. That took a little bit longer than I thought, but eventually I got there and, and those sneaking suspicions at first. Of course, I joined because I knew uh, St. John's to be a place that was vibrant with a lot of different apostolates, uh, whether it be teaching or working in the wood shop or tending the bees or in the gardens or administration. All these certain things I knew that St. John's had. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew that St. John's was a vibrant community that did these things, had that structured prayer life, a solid, prayerful men that I knew already, and of course is on 3,000 of what I think are some of the most beautiful acres in central Minnesota. That's where I got in the beginning, and of course, I continued to explore my faith all throughout my time in the monastery still. I think that's what's wonderful about our faith, is that you're never there. You might catch a glimpse at a time, uh, but you never have the full picture. And so you're continually coming back every day and seeking God and seeking Christ, not only in this prayer, but also in the day-to-day -day living, the conversations, maybe the struggles that are there, uh, work especially for us Benedictines as Ora at Labora it has this balance built in that I think a lot of us are looking for in our daily lives of how do I balance friendships, work, prayer, personal prayer, community responsibilities, and this way of life really fits that into the structure right off the bat. This calls me out of that and says, no, you're gonna drop your work at noon every day, you're gonna go to pray, you're gonna have a meal with your community, and then you'll get back into it. We're here because prayer is what roots us as a community. It's why we are contemplatives in the fact that we do four times a day come together and it's introspective but with a communal aspect to it and then what we take in during that prayer time we live out in our work in our relationships and I think here at St. John's our architecture actually shows us this uh, if you look at the Abbey Church you'll see that the big stained glass window is a honeycomb and I've figured it out that this honeycomb just isn't just a nice shape it really gives a visual of what this community is supposed to be. It's all together to build up this hive, and it's for us, it's the community and the kingdom of God.